Kia ora iti, we good afternoon and welcome to this One News Your Vote special as we bring you the results of the 2023 general election. There have been significant changes from the preliminary results of election night itself. More than half a million special votes have been tallied and this is what the final numbers mean for the all-important seats in the House. Have a look. National ends up with the most seats, 48 seats. Political world, expert analysis as well. One News political editor Jessica Much Mackay is here with us just going through these results. What do you think? Some really interesting numbers there. And I think the big thing to take away from this is, firstly, that because ACT and National are only getting to 59, they're going to need New Zealand first. That puts Winston Peters in a very powerful position and gives some power. The Māori candidate in Tamaki Makoto has won by just four seats. Yeah, so incredible. Uh, four votes, rather. So we will look at those numbers in just a minute. But, but talk to us a bit more about the dynamics when it comes to forming a government, because on those preliminary results, it looked like National and ACT alone might be able to command a majority, a narrow majority, a one-seat majority, but having Winston Peters' support was a nice-to-have rather than a need-to-have. On these numbers, that's changed. Yeah, National and ACT together had a sliver. A percentage of the overall votes cast in this election. So there were 567,000 special votes cast in this election. That's about almost 20% of the, of the total votes cast. Was there, was there any suggestion heading into today that we could see a shift of this size or, or, or where, did, where did you expect to see these special votes would go? I think it was really hard to tell because going into it, usually special votes go to the left. Mm. There were 80,000 people living overseas and some commentators said that because those people living overseas were perhaps feeling frustrated with Labour about uh, being locked out with COVID that they would go to the right which is not mm. typical. And in the next parliament as per these results we're going to take you now live to Rotorua with Te Pāti Māori's newest MP Maria Meno Kapa Kingi Tēnā koe. congratulations how are you feeling? Imagine how they're going to try and design that house. Tēnā koe, Jack. Uh, I'm, I'm feeling great. I'm feeling, uh, well, I'm, I'm, we're here. I'm feeling like we have, um, we've done what we set out to do. And Te Māori on the final results released by the Electoral Commission today. Six MPs Te Pāti Māori is set to have in the next Parliament. Stay with us. We're back with this One News Your Vote special after the break. One News political editor Jessica Much Mackay is not being rude. She's just getting all sorts of messages from her contacts. Is everyone in New Zealand's political world did digest the extraordinary results of the 2023 general election? If you were just joining us for this One News Your Vote special, have a look at these. These are the numbers as they stand for seats in the House. And of course, at of course once a deal has been finalised between the governing parties, there's a strict process which dictates the handover from the caretaker government to the new government. University of Otago Law Professor Andrew Geddes is with us live from gorgeous Aotearoa, Dunedin this afternoon. Thank you for being with us. I'm going to get to the process of forming a government in just a moment. But first of all, talk to us about the likelihood of recounts. We have some incredibly narrow margins in some of these electorates. Yeah, so the recount process is something any candidate can uh, ask for. It's pretty simple. They just have to pay a deposit. So on the results released this afternoon by the Electoral Commission, the Greens have gone from 14 seats, which they had on election night, and the preliminary results to a total of 15 seats. That means one new Green Party MP, and that MP is Kahurangi Carter, who is the Greens Christchurch Central candidate. Congratulations. How are you feeling? <laughs> Kia ora, Jack. I'm feeling great. Thank you very much. Coming to you live from Ototahi. Yeah. <laughs> um, what, what, what does this mean for you? Had you anticipated that you could get the call up at two o'clock? Look, you are always hopeful, but it's all down to the voters. And so I'm feeling great. I was with my son, who's on his NCEA. Uh... Take a look now at the percentage of votes that each party received. Of course, it is seats in the House that matters most under MMP, but these are the final percentage results. So National there uh, received the most votes of any party in the all-important party vote, 38% in total. Labour, just under 27%. The Green Party was the third largest party at 11.6%.
Act at 8.6 and New Zealand First at 6%. Of course, there is a threshold at 5%, which, if parties are only relying on the party vote, needs to be crossed in order for them to be represented in Parliament. But to party Māori, with 3%, will have six MPs in Parliament after winning six of the Māori electorates. You're on the One News Your Vote final count special. We're going to be hearing from outgoing Prime Minister Chris Hipkins in a few minutes. Stay with us. We welcome back to this One News Your Vote special as we go through the final results from the 2023 election. I'm back here with One News political editor Jessica Much Mackay. A couple of things I want to consider, Jessica. First of all, the overall turnout. So we have numbers. In 2017, 79.8% of people who were enrolled to, to vote cast a ballot. In 2020, 82.2%. So that increased. This is the lowest of the last three elections. 78.2% of people who were enrolled to vote cast a ballot. What do you put that down to? I think that's disappointing. I think that there's probably been a bit of a turn-off, particularly perhaps over COVID and people feeling disenfranchised with politics. And New Zealand first. As I'm speaking, though, uh, Prime, or outgoing Prime Minister Chris Hipkins is holding a press conference as his party goes over the numbers. Today, let's hear what he has to say. Uh, the result that Labour received on election night, 34 seats for Labour. Um, I'd like to acknowledge and congratulate those MPs who have picked up a seat, an electorate seat, uh, on the final, on the official vote count, um, and also acknowledge those who have fallen behind in this. We'll be leaving Parliament. One of the big questions looming over today's final numbers is the implications for New Zealand First. Brent, Brent Catchpole is the party's former president. He was in the role during the party's 2017 election negotiations. Thanks for being with us, Brent. Thank you very much for inviting me. What do you make of the numbers today? Oh, absolutely delighted with the numbers. It, um, it gives New Zealand First an opportunity to uh, put forward some of their policies and really have a strong... ..as former party president. We want to show you now some of the final vote tallies in the electorates which have changed hands since the preliminary results on October 14th. So this is the electorate of Nelson. On the preliminary results, Nationals' Blair Cameron was leading by a narrow margin, uh, 54 votes. But as you can see, Ra Rachel Boyack, who is the incumbent MP for Nelson, has won that seat with a relatively narrow margin, just 29 votes in it. Let's have a look at Te Ata Tu. This is one of several Auckland electorates which flipped as per the preliminary results. However, incumbent MP Phil Twyford has held on to Te Ata Tu. He's won by 131 votes. Angie Nicholas, the national candidate, won't make it into Parliament on these numbers. That's also the case for Blair Cameron, who is the candidate in Nelson. And then, of course, two Māori seats have switched hands as per these results. So have a look at Tāmaki Makoto. Takutai Moanatash Kemp has won Tamaki Makoto, and look at that margin. It is just extraordinary. 10,050 votes to Takutai Tash Kemp. Bottom left of your screen, Labour's Peony Hinare with 10,046. So Tash Kemp has a winning margin of just four seats. I am not a betting man, but I feel very, very confident indeed there is likely to be a recount given how narrow that margin is. And let's have a look at Te Tai Tokiro. Heading into the final results today, uh, we had Calvin Davis, Labour's incumbent MP in Te Tai Tokiro, leading by a relatively significant margin, 487 votes. But as you can see there, as per the final results, uh, Maria Meno Kapakingi, 10,428 votes over Calvin Davis. 9,911, uh, 9, so a margin there of 517 votes. Pretty extraordinary there. Four electorates in total changing hands. That means the next parliament will have 122 seats until the Port Waikato by-election in a few weeks' time, which will take the total number of seats in parliament to 123. In the MMP era, that means New Zealand will have its largest parliament ever. Stay with us. This One News Your Vote special continues in a moment.
Kia ora, welcome back to this One News Your Vote special as we go through the final results from the 2023 election. Jessica Much Mackay, One News political editor, I say final results, but we're likely <laughs> going to have to wait for the final, final results, the super duper final results that come through. These are semi final results. Exactly, yeah. from a couple of uh, electorates that I think are probably likely on the current count to be subjected to recounts. Let's talk about Christopher Luxon. He is the Prime Minister elect but he will need the support of two parties in order to form a majority. Unless, of course, we are all surprised and he decides to do a deal with the Greens or Labour, which I don't think many people see happening for the time being. Talk to us about he, how he is likely to conduct uh, the negotiations. Preliminary negotiations have already been taking place, so that's one thing. Oh, I'm sorry, Jess, we're going to have to interrupt you there. David Seymour is speaking. He is ACT Party David Seymour reacting to the results. His party, of course with 11 seats. Here he is now. Let's hear what David Seymour has to say. You there now? Hang on. No? One OK. Right, David, all the time in the world? Nearly as bad as the Electoral Commission. Oh, come on. Three weeks. Almost 600,000 special votes. <laughs> that will no doubt be subject to further Very analysis, good, though. You. Very good. Um, all right, well, we'll, we'll get started. All right, look, well, first of all, thank you very much for coming in. I want to start by thanking uh, the thousands of voters who have trusted... Talking about doing that groundwork, getting out and doing an mm. old-fashioned style of campaign. What was really interesting is that Nika Faitari is the only one who didn't win her seat. She, of course, switched from Labour yeah. to Te Pāti Māori, which has a small <laughs> sense of yeah, irony yeah. to it there. Um, I just think it's interesting when they were talking about being the pebble in the shoe yeah. earlier on in the program, and it just really shows the prominence and dominance Te Pāti Māori have now. Yeah, it's going to be fascinating to see what happens with Te Pāti Māori's caucus during the next parliamentary term. Thank you so much. One News political editor Jessica Much Mackay. Stay with us. This One News Your Vote special continues in a couple of minutes. It is almost time for us to wrap up on this One News Your Vote special. A quick reminder of the seats in the House, the all-important seats in the House as per the final election results. As per the results released today, National will have 48 seats. That means to command a majority and lead the next government, it will need the support of ACT with 11 seats and a third party, likely New Zealand First. New Zealand First will be a need to have, not a nice to have. Ko mutu. That is us for now for this One News special. Thank you so much for your company. National leader and Prime Minister-elect Christopher Luxon will be speaking to media shortly. You can hear his comments by going to onenews.co.nz. Thanks to our wonderful One News political editor, Jessica Much Mackay, for all of her hard work. Always a pleasure, Jack Tay. Thank said, you. He said not days, he said potentially weeks. No, no. <laughs> the team is going to have comprehensive coverage on Te Karere and One News at 6. Until then, good afternoon. Q&A is public interest journalism funded through New Zealand On Air.